Hi, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I want to talk about today is uh, my Hellboy action figures. Um, now, Hellboy just had a new movie come out last weekend, uh, which I saw, and I talked about it uh, an episode or two ago. And even though it's getting pretty bad reviews across the board, um, as I said in my mini review of it, I enjoyed it. I'm very aware of the problems with it. It was by no means a perfect movie, but uh, I had fun watching it. And to be honest, I'm eager to see it again, actually. You know, I went in with very low expectations because I saw it on Sunday and the bad reviews had already hit. Uh, I went in with low expectations, had a lot of fun. And now that kind of the initial, you know, worry is how bad it's going to be or whatever is passed. I'm, I, yeah, I just want to see it again. And it did what it's supposed to do. It got me uh, kind of excited about Hellboy again. And I've never not been excited about Hellboy. I've been a fan of the Hellboy franchise pretty much since the beginning. Uh, it was probably by the time about the third um, trade paperback had come out that I got on board with Hellboy. And so we're talking, you know, 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, I have, have all the comics that are Hellboy related. There you see my Hellboy collection. And here's all the spin-offs. So Abe Sapien, Black Flame, Frankenstein, Kosh Koshishi, however you say that guy's name, Lobster Johnson, Rasputin, Sledgehammer, The Visitor, Witchfinder, and then all the BPRDs. So you can see I've got a lot of Hellboy books. And I just stuck this here too. I also have the art of Hellboy from the original movie. So yeah, big Hellboy fan. Not to mention all the uh, the Baltimore hardcovers, which are also by Hellboy creator Mike Mignola. Big fan of those books as well. If you haven't read Baltimore, I strongly recommend that you do. So yeah, I love all the Hellboy comic books. I don't think anything they've done in other media have lived up to the comic books, but it's all been pretty enjoyable. I liked the two Guillermo del Toro movies. I liked the animated movies, and I liked this new uh, version as well. So uh, yeah, after watching the new Hellboy the other day, uh, I came home and I watched, I rewatched the uh, 2004 movie, and I plan to rewatch uh, the second one, uh, maybe tonight. I don't know. So uh, yeah, I was uh, thought I would talk about Hellboy action figures. I have a few of them, and uh, I didn't think there was all that many to talk about. Um, but when I went online to kind of do a little bit of research before putting this video together, I realized that there's a whole lot more Hellboy figures than I ever realized. So I've only got a fraction of them, so I'll show you the ones that I do have, and I'll just talk briefly about the ones that I don't. So uh, yeah, let's dive in and look at my Hellboy collection. So the first action figure I'm going to show you is this one here from Graffiti Designs, and it was released in the year 2000. Now, not only is this my first Hellboy action figure, but it is the first Hellboy action figure ever released. And I thought they nailed it right out of the park with this. I, I loved this figure back when it came out. I was really excited to get it. And uh, I still think it's great, actually. So I thought it really captures Mike Mignola's signature artistic style. The face looks great. I love that he's wearing the BPRD shirt. Uh, he's got a holster there on his belt, so his big old gun can be holstered. He also came with a sword, which I've got tucked away somewhere. Uh, out of the little teeny feet. I know it might look perhaps a little silly, but that's accurate to uh, how he's drawn in the comic books. Uh, the right hand of doom, his big stone fist. Looks great. A couple of cracks in the stone. And uh, yeah, and he's got his trench coat. Now this is just, uh, it's kind of like a rag, really. There's no detail to the coat at all other than the collar, which is a different color. But yeah, it's pretty basic. That's the biggest flaw with this figure, I would say, is that coat, which is kind of underwhelming. You see, he's got his, uh, his tail there. It's kind of looped around. Let's back it up here. Yeah, so there's some nice detail under there as well. Got pouches all around his belt, tail loops around. Yeah, nicely articulated. You see, he's got uh, joints there at the ankles, 
at the knee. Pretty much everywhere you'd expect. And yeah, awesome figure. Love it. So after that initial Hellboy figure in 2000, we didn't get any more Hellboy related figures until the live action movie came out in 2004. So Mezco was the company that released the uh, Hellboy movie line. And they released a bunch of figures. So this here is Abe, Abe Sapien, the uh, fishman sidekick of Hellboy. And uh, you see here, lots of nice detail on him. And he had quite a few accessories, if I recall. Again, I had them all tucked away, so I don't have everything available to show you. Um, but he had an alternate head without the goggles. And you can take this kind of... This is the thing he wore when he was on land to help him breathe. You can take that off. So there you go. You can display him without the breathing apparatus and without the goggles as well. I can't recall what he had for weapons. Uh, maybe a spear. Um, he might have even had a vest. I can't recall. Anyway, I was surprised. So this is one of those lines when I knew there was a few Hellboy figures from the movie. And I didn't get many of them. Partly because I liked the comic book look so much. And the movie, as great as it was, it just didn't look enough like the comic book. So I didn't feel like these were my versions of these characters. But I love the character of Abe Sapien. And since it seemed unlikely that I was going to get a comic book version of him anytime soon, I did pick up this version of Abe Sapien. But there were, uh, there was, I think, another version of Abe. And then there was about half a dozen versions of Hellboy. Um, so you could get Hellboy with his mouth open, with his mouth closed, with his stone fist open, with his stone fist closed, with a jacket, without a jacket, shirtless. There was uh, all kinds of versions. There was versions with his big horns grown out. Um, there was also Cronin, and there was a couple versions of him, one in his kind of like 40s era Nazi outfit, as well as him in his uh, kind of contemporary outfit. There was Rasputin, uh, and he came with a baby Hellboy. So I didn't get any of those. Abe is the only uh, like speaking character that I got from the movie. So there, this is the one other toy that I got from that first movie line. So this is Samael, the uh, Hound of Resurrection, which was featured pretty prominently as the main monster in the movie. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool figure. So in the movie, he was uh, a combination of CG and an actual guy in a suit. And uh, yeah, he had a pretty crazy design with this, like, his head wasn't, like, symmetrical. Although here it appears to be. Looks like he maybe has two eyes on each side, although I'm pretty sure in the movie he had multiple eyes on one side, not the other. Um, he's got a hinged jaw there. And lots of detail under his neck. Those crazy dreadlocks, and these are made of like a soft, soft rubber, so they're not really articulated, but you can move them around. Lots of nice detail sculpted into his skin, his kind of exposed spine there. You know, lots of nice articulation in the leg, multiple joints there, the knee, end of the ankle. And uh, probably my favorite bit about him is this uh, kind of weird finger kind of works like an axe or but it kind of just tucks back there as well because at certain points in the movie it just kind of looks like he has a forearm and then it kind of breaks apart and he uses it as a weapon so uh, yeah very cool like on the other side you can see how it looks like it's just part of his forearm but it's, it doesn't actually separate it's only on, on this side that it does that but anyway yeah very cool figure now before I move on to the next figure I just want to pop into this Art of Hellboy book for a second. If you've never seen it, it's kind of cool to see some behind the scenes stuff. And this shows you the evolution of the uh, Samael character. So I'll try and figure out the best way to show this to you. Yes, yeah, so there's one drawn by Mignola himself. And well, these are all drawn by Mignola, but you can see here, this is where he's really kind of taking shape to what we saw in the movie. There's some other kind of crazy designs. Kind of close to what we get, but still fairly different. And those are some really far out there designs. It's 
pretty big and sluggish and that probably would have been tough to pull off for a guy in a, in a suit. But here we go. They really started kind of nailing it here. Here's where they worked out those uh, claw weapons. And this here, this I love this shot. So this is pretty much the finalized version, but in the uh, classic Mignola style. So even though this is kind of how he appeared in the movie, which is great, I just love seeing them in this style. So next up, this is another figure from the 2004 movie. But this is one of a handful of 18 inch figures they released. So this guy is pretty big. And he's very hard to show you just using my tablet here. Now compared to some of the high end figures I have now, like Hot Toys figures and stuff, this guy might not seem all that special. But when I bought this back in 2004, he was one of the most expensive figures I had ever bought. I remember I went in to get my comic books one day and I went into Strange Adventures, my local comic book shop, and they had a couple of these things, and they were 75 bucks a piece, which, you know, is about $45 more than I would really spend on an action figure generally. And I'd already kind of committed to not really buy too many of these movie-based figures. And I actually left, but I walked, I walked about five minutes away, and I was like, ah, hell, man, I, that's such a cool-looking thing. I'm going to be really pissed if I don't pick it up, and then I end up missing out on it. So, you can see he's got a ton of detail here. Now, he's actually not very articulated. Like, he doesn't have any joints. Uh, he's got that one swivel joint in the leg. But he can't, like, bend his knees. Um, but still, lots of nice detail. He's very dusty, which helps show off some of that uh, detail. Buckle on his belt. See here the, uh, the leather holster for his gun. So you can actually put that in there. The detail on the hand is really cool. Along the back here, you'll see he's got his little uh, kind of samurai man bun there. Now the coat, though it's not not real leather or anything, mind you, but it's very cool. Definitely a step in the right direction compared to that rag that the other one was wearing. And the jacket is removable. Uh, I'm not going to take it off from here, but you see his uh, his shirt here can be zipped up. Um, yeah, that's going to be tough to do with one hand, but yeah, so you can zip that up if you like. Um, he's got lots of neat little trinkets on his belt here. So there's like a lucky horseshoe over here. He's got a rosary cross on it there. And the tail is really cool material too. It's kind of like a soft rubber. So not poseable, but still very easy to move around. So there's his, his gun. Fits nicely into his hand. And ugh, it's cool that you can flip that open. And the bullets even come out, which, hmm, my bullet seems to have wandered off somewhere. So that spins around, yeah. And I'll just try and show you some of the detail on the back here, too. So again, he's got those pouches all along the back. And yeah, just a really cool figure. So, this figure, the reason he's so dusty is because he's been on display pretty much since I bought him. Back in 2004, he just kind of stands on top of my bookshelf. It's kind of hard to put him anywhere else because he is so big. But, uh, yeah, really cool. Now, before we move on to the next one, I'll just let you check this guy out again for a second while I talk about some of the other Hellboy figures that I did not get, such as when the sequel to Guillermo del Toro's movie came out. Um, so there was a whole other movie line for the 2008 movie. There was more of the 18-inch figures, the large ones. I didn't get any more of those. And then there was a whole series of 6-inch figures, which included, uh, again, a bunch of versions of Hellboy, uh, the Angel of Death, Liz Sherman, a couple variations of her, uh, Johan Krauss, Wink was the big monster from that one. Then there was Prince Nuada and uh, Princess Nuwala. There was a legless goblin from the underworld. Um, so I think that pretty much covers uh, the six inch line. Then there was a couple miscellaneous things. There was some uh, little things called BPRD buddies. There was a line of three and three quarter inch figures, but they were more like... Uh, little statues. I don't think they had any articulation. There was also a line called Mezits, which was like little brick people, as well as also called Mezits, a, a line of uh, kind of super deformed figures along the lines of Mighty Mugs. So yeah, those were all figures that I did not get. So once they had wrapped up with their movie line, Mezco then put out a line of Hellboy figures based on the comic book. 
So this is the line I had been waiting for. And I don't know why I didn't buy all of them at the time. The figures that I didn't buy are now really expensive on the secondary market. And it is one of my biggest regrets as far as toy purchases go that I didn't buy characters like Roger when I saw them available at Strange Adventures. Again, I think it was just a matter of these were maybe $30 toys at the time. And I was probably on a tighter budget back then. But So I bought a few of them, but I didn't buy all of them. And now to go back and try and find them, we're talking about these figures are at least 100 bucks a pop. And yeah, hopefully eventually I will go back and finish this collection. But this here is Johan Kraus. If you haven't read the comic books, you might at least recognize him from the second movie, even though he looked quite different. In the movie, he looked like he was kind of wearing an old uh, like diving suit. But in the comic books, he just he has this kind of uniform with a big uh, kind of bubble where his spirit is just contained in here. He's just kind of a cloud of smoke within this outfit. And this, I think, just looks great. I think it really captures the style of the comic book. Just this kind of angular uh, look. It's quite different from that first Hellboy figure I showed you. Uh, it's a lot more detailed, which... Uh, I don't know if this is more or less like Mike Mignola's art because Mignola isn't necessarily known for a ton of detail. He kind of works pretty simply and there's a lot of things hidden in the shadows. So honestly, I think the original figure is probably more accurate, but uh, there was a diff different artist working on Hellboy by this point in time. And uh, this is kind of ca captures the collective look of some of the different artists that worked on it. And I just think it looks fantastic. So lots of nice articulation. Kind of a cool like matte finish he's got a cool feel to him too these are pretty heavy figures so you see on his hand here he had two um swappable hands you could do this on both sides so johan's power is that he can kind of uh be a medium or something for spirits and so the spirit's going to come out of his hand like this in this kind of uh smoky smokiness i guess so here you'll see the smoke coming out of his fingertips and forming another hand there which is really cool and it's kind of like a translucent plastic so you could do that on both, but I just have his standard hand here. Uh, again, he's got this vest here, this belt, it's kind of soft rubber and it's a little separate piece from the rest of the figure. And he might have had additional accessories as well, like guns and stuff. I can't recall now, but I'm sure I've got them somewhere. Anyway, Johan is one of my favorite characters from the book, and I think this is an amazing figure. And from the same comic book lineup from Mezco, this is Lobster Johnson. So Lobster Johnson, he actually did appear in the new movie in a cameo played by Thomas Hayden Church, which was a real thrill for me because Lobster Johnson is a character that's been around in the comic books since uh, the very early days. And he doesn't really interact with Hellboy. His ghost has, and there's a nod to that in the, in the movie. Um, but he's a character, kind of a pulp hero that was working for the BPRD kind of before Hellboy had ever been born during World War II. So yeah, he's kind of in the a pulp hero in the same vein as like say the Shadow or the Rocketeer even. So yeah, he's got that very cool jacket with the Lobster Claw logo on it. On his hand, you'll see he's got the Lobster Claw, which is what he burns into the foreheads of his enemies. Just lots of nice detail throughout. Little uh, holster there, and the flap lifts up so you can put his gun in there. He's got a gas canister and rope, some more pouches. Yeah, just very, very cool. Now, I know he did have a gun. Um, I must have had that tucked away somewhere in his accessory parts, accessory bin. Now, this is another accessory he came with, which is specific to a storyline in the comic book. So this is like an evil floating brain. And it's kind of cool that it has this posable wire tendril that can wrap around him. So that's how I keep him displayed in my cabinet. But yeah, another great figure, and I think this, to this day, is the only Lobster Johnson figure. Uh, no, well, that's not true. I'm about to show you more of them. But I guess the only comic-accurate version of Lobster Johnson. And uh, yeah, I think it's great. So here's another figure from the comic book line from Mezco. So this is Liz Sherman. So she is another uh, mainstay of the Hellboy comic book. One of the prominent members of the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense. And I'm really glad I got this figure. Because um, Liz Sherman, uh, as portrayed by Selma Blair in the movies, they made figures of her. But uh, nothing wrong with Selma Blair's performance, but 
I really liked the way Liz looked in the comic books. She looked a lot like this. She wasn't glamorous. She looked depressed. She looked tired. And yeah, I'm glad they didn't like pretty her up for this figure. This is what she looks like. She's ready for battle. She's got her tactical gear on. Got her um, knapsack there with the BPRD logo. It's also on her sleeve there. She's got the many pouches on her belt, as we've come to expect with these figures. Now, she's got some really cool accessories. This uh, flame on her hand, you'll see it's like a little peg that goes into her hand, so it kind of looks like the flame is just floating. Because she has, uh, I don't know, what's the term? Pyro, pyrokinesis or whatever. I'm blanking on it, but you know, she has fire powers. So it's kind of cool that you've got that flame there, and that kind of snaps off. And she also is one of my favorite accessories of all times for any of my action figures, and I can't believe I haven't lost it yet. But she has a lit cigarette action figure, or accessory. And her fingers are separated in such a way that it can be displayed between her fingers, although it's very hard to get it to stay there. And I think... No, nah, I could be wrong. I was going to say, I wasn't sure if it could go into her mouth, but no, I don't think it does. Anyway... I think this is a very cool figure. Really captures the look of the character from the comic book. Yeah, love it. And next up from the movie line is Abe Sapien. Now, it took me a while to get this figure. I had those other uh, comic book-based figures for a couple of years before I finally get Abe. And that's because he was a Comic-Con exclusive. I believe it was San Diego. So he was made in limited numbers and he was harder to get. And I did end up paying a bit more for him on eBay to eventually get him. But unlike the other guys that I regret getting, like, say, Roger and uh, Kriegaf, the giant gorilla, um, Abe was something I had to have. Abe is possibly my favorite character from the book. And as much as, you know, I like this figure, it just, it wasn't the Abe I wanted. So this, this here is the Abe I wanted. I think this figure is perfect. Really captures his look from the comic book. Because in the movies, I thought they made Abe, eh, you know, he was kind of wimpy. You know, he used his uh, kind of mental powers and his smarts to help out. But he wasn't really a, like a field operative. But in the comic books, he was. Uh, he was he was pretty tough and pretty badass in his own right. And this figure uh, really captures it. Like, I love the, uh, the tactical vest, the spear, his little, little feet, the fins on his arms, the logo on the back of his jacket. Anyway, I just think he looks fantastic. Love this figure. I can't imagine them ever making a better Abe Sapien figure than this. Now, I've already told you how much I liked that original Hellboy figures uh, figure I have. And for that reason, I didn't buy a Hellboy from this comic book line. And there were multiple ones to choose from. I think there was about six different variations. And I'm really kicking myself for not getting Hellboy now because... I have all these figures all on display, and as good as that other Hellboy is, he doesn't... Oh, shit. His spear just broke. His spear literally just broke. Ah. Anyway, uh, the Hellboy doesn't really match the aesthetic of these other figures. So, yeah, one of these days I'm going to have to get one of those comic book uh, Hellboys from Mezco to display with these guys. Anyway, man, now I'm depressed. So next up is this Funko Pop Hellboy. But before I talk about him, I just want to talk a little bit more about some of the other figures that I don't have. So there was a couple of figures based on the animated movies that I mentioned earlier. And those were put out by Gentle Giant. And then there was also a company, uh, Sideshow, which made some uh, like 12-inch versions of Hellboy, of Abe, and of Cronin. And after that, so those movies all came out around... Those figures all came out around the same time of the second movie. So we're talking, you know, 2008, 2009. And then we didn't have anything from for Hellboy for about 10 years. Um, but yeah, Funko had kind of has kind of brought it back. So besides the pops that I'm going to show you in a second, Funko has also made um, some Dorbs, which are another one of their cute little lines. So you can get both Hellboy and Abe in Dorb version. And they also have a line called Vinyl which is, again, is another cutesy toy line they have, which also has uh, Hellboy and Abe. But the line that Funko is most popular for is the, the Pops. So I'm sure if you've been into a store in the last five years, you know what a Funko Pop is. 
I don't really need to explain it to you. But yeah, so these guys are just cutesy little versions, the kind of thing you see on people's desks at work. And yeah, Hellboy is pretty cute. I dig him, got the gun, got the stone fist. You know, what more do you want out of Hellboy? So, so there's Hellboy. I also have the chase variant of Hellboy. So this is Hellboy with his horns. Otherwise, the exact same figure. So along with Hellboy, there's also a Funko Pop version of Abe Sapien. So here he is in all his fishy glory with his gills and yeah, pretty cool. Next up is Liz Sherman. So you'll see here, she's got a flame in one hand and a cigarette in the other. So I think maybe Funko took a look at that uh, Mezco figure for some uh, design ideas with this figure. And we also have Lobster Johnson. So everything you saw on the other figure as well, he's got the lobster claw on the one hand, he's got his pistol there, he's got that great kind of pulp look about him. Now we get into some bad guys. So this is Rasputin. So this is pretty cool because I never had a version of Rasputin and he is eh, probably the main bad guy in the Hellboy universe. So it was cool to finally get this figure of him. And the last Funko Pop I have is the Blood Queen. So when this line of figures came out, I actually considered not buying Blood Queen. Because I know she was, you know, a villain in one of the storylines, but she is kind of come and gone. I don't think we'll be seeing her again. I didn't necessarily consider her one of the main characters that I needed. So I thought, yeah, you know what, I'm not going to bother with this. But I already knew that she was going to be featured in the new movie played by Mila Jovovich. And I thought, you know what, I'd hate to pass up on this figure and then really like the character in the movie. And then this figure would be really hard to find. So I picked it up. It's a cool figure. I like the uh, all the different whoop, all the different birds sculpted on her helmet there. Not a bad figure. Now, I don't think Mila Jovovich really did anything to sell me on this character any more than I already was. But I am glad I picked it up anyway. So next up, we have these uh, reaction figures from Super 7. So these are done in a kind of retro 80s style. This is kind of a popular trend these days. So I'm going to closer look at the figure. You know, very simple, the kind of thing done in that uh, classic Kenner Star Wars style with five points of articulation. So his legs swing forwards, his arms uh, swing up and down, and his head turns. And that's it. And it's got that really cool Magnola artwork on the packaging. Shows you the other figures. There's a bit of a bio. Now, uh, these figures here, they do have a charm about them. But I collect, you know, a lot of the figures I buy now are better versions of the toys I had like this when I was a kid. So it seems kind of funny to go back now and even though I have a nice version of Hellboy, to go back and get old, I don't want to say crappy, but... You know, this kind of simple figure. Um, but the real selling point of these figures for me is the packaging, which is why I haven't opened them, because um, these get pinned up to my wall, and they just look really cool, just as a, like a piece of art almost. So yeah, great figures. There is a part of me that would like to open up, open this figure up and play with it, but uh, you know, I think we're going to keep them carded for now. So along with Hellboy, there's Abe Sapien. Again, that great uh, artwork on the packaging. It's superior to the figure. I don't know if that figure really looks like Abe in my mind, but he's got his little spear gun, which is cute, and looks like he's wearing flip flops or something. I don't know. Anyway, not a bad figure for what it is. Again, bio on the back. So, kind of fun. Next up is Liz Sherman. And so you can see there on that artwork, that's kind of what I was talking about. Uh, you know, she's not a glamorous character, and so. That other figure captured her really well, whereas opposed to this figure, you know, she, this is look, like a happy-go-lucky figure, the kind of thing you'd expect to see in the Star Wars line or something, and it doesn't really capture Liz. But for this basic, simple style of figure, it works just well, just uh, pretty good. Anyway, there you go, she's got a little bio on the back as well. And lastly, I have Lobster Johnson. So, again, that really great Magnola artwork on the packaging. The figure's a lot of fun. Very pulpy. 
and this one I really would like to open up and play with. I have uh, I have the Rocketeer figure from this line, and I opened him up. And uh, yeah, these these two would be kind of fun to play with together. But uh, alas, gonna keep him carded. So that is the last of my Hellboy figures that I have. Um, so just before I sign off, I'll tell you about some of the other figures. Um, so this line has continued. I don't know if I'll be buying the other ones because there's two three packs that have come out. One with uh, Hellboy with his horns, along with Cronin and Kriegaf, the big, I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but the big uh, kind of Nazi gorilla. And then the other three pack has Hellboy, Johan, and Rasputin. Um, my local comic shop has those for 60 bucks, which is a lot to ask for these simple little figures. Plus, they come in a three pack, so they don't have this nice packaging. So I don't even think I could really pin it to my wall as a display piece. And so for that reason, I don't think I can justify the 60 bucks. Um, and then they also just recently put out a, a translucent version of uh, this Hellboy. Actually, I'm not sure if it's the same version. The translucent one might not have a coat. He might just be shirtless. Um, but there's a translucent Hellboy that comes with a little retro style carrying case that you can put all of your Hellboy figures in. And then uh, some other figures that are just coming out now, um, but based on the new movie. So there's a new Funko Pop, which I haven't seen in stores yet, but that's based on his look from the new movie. Um, there's also a new 12 inch figure from Mezco. Uh, there's a Mega Constructs little block figure that's coming out. Um, there's a really nice comic based figure by a company called A Thousand Toys, which I might get because they have an Abe Sapien coming out as well. I think those guys look like they're uh, not, they're bigger than six inches, but I think they're smaller than 12. So I don't know, maybe eight or nine inches, but they look really cool. Um, I actually talked about them in my Toy Fair 2019 video, if you guys want to go back and take a look at that. And, uh, just today, actually, before I came down here to shoot this video, I saw, um, that there's a Hot Toys Hellboy coming out. So yeah, if you missed it on any of these ones, don't worry, there's still plenty of Hellboy coming. So those are my Hellboy action figures. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button comment below, maybe subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you have any uh, comments or any suggestions for other videos for me to do, this is my third character specific video. I already did uh, action figure showcases of Venom and the Green Goblin. And I recently had somebody comment on one of those videos that I should do similar videos for Cobra Commander and the Dreadnoughts. So those are two that I plan to do in the next little while. But yeah, if there's anybody else you wanna see, by all means, let me know. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.